welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about terminal velocity. Now terminal velocity is something you may have heard at um, GCSE, but I'm just going to quantify it here for physics. Now I have a graph here that is actually representing terminal velocity and I'm going to explain the process of what terminal velocity is. And I'm going to use a, an example of a parachutist for example. So a parachuter here jumps out of this um, plane here, so he's going to jump out, and he will start falling to the ground, okay? So he wouldn't, of course, have his parachute open here. So this person's going to base jump and come out here, he's going to jump out, and he's going to start falling to the ground, he's going to start accelerating. As he speeds up friction, he starts hitting more and more particles. So as V increases, okay, the amount of friction he feels also increases. So this is friction. So the amount of friction he feels will increase. This means, therefore, the resultant force, uh, resultant force decreases. So if I just draw a blob here to represent him, I've got my force or my weight downwards, and I've got this friction upwards. And of course my resultant force, F, is going to be the weight to take away the friction. So as the friction goes, because he gets faster, the friction goes up because he's hitting more particles. My resultant force goes down. This means using F equals MA, my acceleration also decreases. Now this here is a velocity time graph. And in previous videos, I have mentioned about the gradient of this graph representing acceleration. And if we look at the gradient of this graph, so if I just grab a ruler here, the gradient of the graph, I'll grab a white one instead so you can see it. So at the start, I have a nice quite constant gradient. But as I reach this point here, my, as you can see, the steepness of this gradient gets lower and lower and lower and to the point where I have no gradient at all. And this here is the terminal velocity. So this is the terminal velocity when the resultant force, which is the weight minus the friction, equals zero. Therefore, the acceleration equals zero. <coughs> So this is the idea of terminal velocity. Now, what happens, the reason a parachuter, when he's jumping off, uh, base jumping on the plane, etc., when he's initially falling up here, okay, he has the weight and the friction here, the drag, the air drag, and the resultant force is the weight minus the friction. Okay, when he reaches terminal velocity, when the weight equals the friction, he's still going quite fast. And what he needs to do is try and address that balance. And you don't really want to be hitting the ground at a really high speed. So you open a parachute here. Okay, you open the parachute. And what happens? All of a sudden you have an imbalance, that the friction is greater than the weight, which you means you have a force in, a resultant force in the opposite direction, which means your acceleration is also in the opposite direction. So it is slowing 
you down. And then eventually what would happen, you would slow down, this friction would uh, balance out with the weight and then you would get to ter a new terminal velocity. But that new terminal velocity will be lower than what would happen. So if I was going to graphically represent that here, velocity and time, I would have quite a sharp incline and then all of a sudden I would get to a terminal velocity. So this is where my friction equals the weight. So we'll go at a terminal velocity for an amount of time. Then all of a sudden, it would drop that I would open my parachute and my acceleration is negative. And you can see that by the graph here because it is a negative slope. And then here is my new terminal velocity. which is much, much lower than it was initially. And that's what you're going to be going to the ground with. And that is terminal velocity.